Professor of Psychology Matthew Knox studies suicidal and self-injurious behavior, what causes it, how to predict it, and how to prevent it. As one way of assessing people's risk of attempting suicide, Knox adapted two tests that had previously been used for other purposes in psychology research. The Implicit Association Test, or IAT, developed by Knox colleague Mazarin Benaji, examines thoughts people may not admit to or may not even be aware of by tracking subjects' response times as they associate words with images or with other words. Banaji had used the IAT to assess prejudice about race, sex, age, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and obesity. For example, subjects rapidly made the association between good and pictures of European-American faces and the association between bad and pictures of African-Americans. They took longer to associate bad with the pictures of white people and to associate good with the pictures of black people, indicating latent prejudice even though their attitudes gauged with the questionnaire revealed no such preference. On Matthew Knox's version of the IAT, designed to assess people's risk of attempting suicide, subjects are asked to associate suicide-related words or pictures with personally relevant words such as self. Their response time when making these pairings is compared to their response time as they associate the suicide-related words and images with non-personally relevant words. Using the test on children who had already engaged in self-injurious behavior, such as cutting themselves, Nock found that the children who scored highest on the test, making the fastest associations when pairing self and self-harm, were most likely to make a suicide attempt. He obtained a similar finding with adults. Those who made the more rapid associations when pairing self and death or suicide were more likely to have made a recent suicide attempt. Moreover, performance on this test also significantly predicted which suicide attempters went on to make another attempt in the next six months. Within the last five years, Banaji notes, a great deal of evidence has mounted to demonstrate that the IAT predicts real-world behavior. She says Knox's work with the IAT is a significant contribution to showing that a relatively mechanistic, computerized test can predict how people behave, from hiring to evaluation of work, from medical treatment to now predicting who is likely to commit suicide. The Stroop test has been used in psychology since the 1930s. On this test, a longer response time is presumed to indicate that a person has already been thinking about something. The test assesses attention by asking subjects to override their instantaneous reactions and engage in higher order thinking. For example, subjects might see the word red printed in green ink. Their first impulse is to read the word out loud. The test asks them to override this impulse and name the ink color green instead. In adapting the test for his purposes, Nock measured subjects' response time as they named the ink colors of suicide-related words, such as suicide, dead, and funeral and compared that response time to their speed in naming the ink colors of neutral words such as paper, engine, and museum. He found that for each millisecond of increased response time came a 1% increase in the odds that a subject would make a suicide attempt within the next six months. Nock explains that the increased response time presumably means the subject was distracted by the suicide-related words and was prevented from naming the color as quickly. He cautions that further experiments are needed, for instance, testing the predictive ability of these tools with people who have not previously attempted suicide or been thinking about suicide. But he believes these tests ultimately may have the potential for widespread use in determining who is at risk of attempting suicide and who is most urgently in need of treatment.